Hey guys, I'm back with another review today and we are looking at the Marvel Legends What If series Hydra Stomper. At the top of the box, we have the Watcher logo staying on brand with the entire wave. Onto the bottom, we have product information. Down to the sides, artwork of the Hydra Stomper running into battle with his eyes glowing. And on to the back, we have the full version of that artwork. Description of Steve Rogers in the suit made by Howard Stark. And on to the last side, that same artwork of the Stomper running into battle. So let's go ahead and get him open. There's a purple backdrop in the box. Probably some ruins from the World War II. Over here on the plastic tray, we have the Stomper, two interchangeable hands, two yellow blast effects, and there's also a second tray on the back with the parts for the Stomper's jetpack. First up, let's assemble the jetpack. It consists of one middle piece and two side thrusters. The two side thrusters simply clip onto that hinge and make sure this bottom pipe goes into that peg over there, popping on the right side as well. The jetpack has nice details, but it's mostly just cast in an army green. There are finer details like the handle at the top in the middle of the jetpack, hinges that are nicely sculpted on where the two thrusters connect and they also function for the thrusters to swing in and out. Interesting details for those mechanical linkages down the middle and those bellow pipes extending down the middle onto the thrusters, likely to supply jet fuel for the flight. Onto the thrusters, they're also sculpted nicely with panels at the top and smaller details like the fasteners down the middle. And these fasteners are also sculpted all the way round to the sides and back of the thrusters. Interesting venting panel detail over here. And these are separate pieces cast in a darker olive. And onto the bottom of the thrusters, there's some black weathering paint. And these also appear to be digitally applied. So it's supposed to add wear and signs of use. But because they are applied digitally and rather accurately across all the panels on the bottom of the thruster, they end up looking a little bit unnatural on closer inspection. With the peg on the middle of the jetpack, you can plug it onto the back of the Hydra Stomper like so. He comes with two blast effects cast in a white translucent plastic. And these are given yellow paint that fades nicely into the white. The blast effects are simply upscaled effects that we've seen from Iron Man figures. So once again, we see the benefits of having action figures digitally sculpted. So there's convenience in bringing all these accessories to a larger scale. But that also means we keep seeing that same sculpt across different figures. You can probably pop the back of the, the blast effect off. As you can see over here, it still rotates. But there seems to be quite a bit of resistance at the back, so I'm not going to force it. And you can plug these blast effects onto the bottom of the thrusters on the jetpack, so the Hydra Stomper looks like he's blasting off. And finally, he comes with two fists, and these are cast in the same army green. These fists have nice sculpted detail for the segments of metal parts in the fingers. And of course, these fists are also articulated inwards as well as outwards. And of course, you can also easily swap the default hands for these swappable fists. Right out of the box, the Hydra Stomper is a big, chunky boy, and that's probably because he's made up from a lot of solid, big plastic parts. He's mostly cast in this army green, with a little subtle paint details here and there. For his head sculpt, the aesthetic quite resembles Iron Man suits. It's generally a round and smooth head sculpt with a couple of details, like the light blue plastic inserts for the eyes. He's also sculpted with a mouth grill. Moving on to the top of that head sculpt, he's got a couple of stripes. And down to the side, as well as the back of the head sculpt, we see some darker olive paint. So there's a nice touch of additional color and detail to that head sculpt. At the top of his shoulders, he's got a couple of excess handles as well as an antenna. These handles actually run down the side of his body all the way down to his thighs. So that gives you a route of access for Steve Rogers to get into that suit. Onto his torso, it also has a lot of detail. Two hits of that darker olive paint over here also at the top of the torso. 
inserted plastic pieces, olive over here for the vents, as well as light blue over here for possibly a power source. Very sharp application of white paint for the star on the right side, as well as C15 on the left side. Also another hit of dark olive paint over here for the fastener that goes into the left side of his chest. He's got kind of a belt over here as well. This serves to disguise that waist joint really well and also has that excess handle that lines up really well with the root of excess. Just below this belt piece, there are also nice rivet detail on that waist piece. Moving on to his arms, I also spot some extra detail on the insides of the sides of his torso. Once again, more nice sculpting work over here, as well as more rivets down the side. The aesthetic of this armor just really reflects the period of the early 1940s during the World War II. Moving on to his arms, he's got shoulder pads and these are once again also keyed into that shoulder joint. So it moves well along with that arm. Once again, this is how shoulder pads should be designed. There's got some panel detail on the front as well as the top. On the side of the shoulder pad, we see some of that glossy dark olive paint which is a strange choice for me because that gloss kind of throws me off the rest of the non-glossy olive paint that's used on the rest of the armor. Taking a closer look at the arm beneath the shoulder pad, there are also nice sculpted line detail on that upper bicep. We see the same side vent detail on the forearm as the shoulder pad. The forearms also have a smooth armor look to them, once again also held together by rivets. And on the inside of the forearm, it's just smooth. I also noticed the sculpting in that elbow joint, looking like real mechanical parts making up this armor piece. Onto the hands, they have that same segmented armor detail as the fists that we saw just now. And on the bottom of his left forearm, we see some nice groove detail over here possibly to help the Hydra Stomper as he gets into some melee action. On his back, we've already seen the jetpack, so removing it, the armor detail is smooth and plain on the back. The same elements on that waist piece is also brought all the way around to the back as well. We move on to his right forearm, and this time he's got two blasters sculpted below. Nice vent detail down the barrel of this blaster. It's also painted in that dark olive. And with this peg hole, you can also fit one of the regular Iron Man blast effects. The shorter blaster on the inside of the forearm is more simple looking. Onto the Hydra Stomper's legs. Once again, we see smooth panels all over with subtle paint detail like the head of olive over here. And also nice sculpting for more mechanical detail. Once again, the rivets all the way down the sides as well as the bottom of the thighs. The left and right legs are almost the same design except for the excess handles over here. Moving down to the sides of his legs, interesting sculpting detail over here. Once again, showing how the, the armor works with that joint going into the hip. There are also several other panel details down the shin armor. Moving on to the back. I like how even the joint also has some mechanical detail sculpted into it. Once again, more of those rivets down the back of the thighs as well as the joint over here to show how the shin armor actually is held together. Overall, all these joints and rivets sculpted in remind me of a World War II tank. And that's definitely the aesthetic that they were going for when designing this Hydra Stomper. There's even more rivet detail down the back of the ankle as well. Onto his foot. This time the foot is cast in that darker olive with that army green plastic piece inserted on the top of the foot. The feet themselves actually look a little undersized by proportion, as you can see how big and chunky the rest of the leg is. What is really lacking in the design of the foot is a more substantial heel, which would give this figure more stability. I've had a couple of stability issues posing with this figure because of the small feet and I'll talk about them later on. And lastly, there's a small detail that the bottom of his feet also have grooves sculpted into it, so that's a nice touch. For articulation, his head is on a double ball dumbbell joint with one ball going into his head and the other into his neck. So that gets you 360 rotation. There's also a good bit of sideways tilt left as well as right. The range is probably limited by the sculpting of the armor on the shoulders. Also able to look quite a fair bit downwards as well as upwards. So that's useful for his flight poses. Swivel hinge at the shoulder so that goes forward as well as backward. 360. 
going outward that far. Bicep swivel just covered by that shoulder pad, so it goes 360 as well. Single hinge at the elbow, that gets you just under 90 degrees. Once again, also because of those chunky armored pieces. Swivel hinge at the wrist, so that goes 360, articulating in as well as out. He's got a ball joint at the waist and that's disguised by this waist piece. So he gets to rotate left as well as right. He's also able to tilt sideways to the left as well as to the right. He also gets some backward crunch as well as forward. All that forward, backward and sideways range ends up being pretty limited but that's okay because this guy is quite a big character. On his backpack, he's got hinges so those thrusters also articulate. He's got ball joints at the hips and it goes out quite a fair bit, more than enough for a big armored dude. As well as forward and backward range that much. If you swivel his thigh to the side, you might be able to squeeze a little bit more range out of that joint. These hip ball joints actually feel a little tight and gummy and also contribute to the stability problems that I'll talk about later on. And of course a thigh swivel swinging the legs outwards as well as inwards. A tight single joint at the knees that gets you just under 90 degrees once again because of chunky armored pieces. He's got a swivel just above the ankle so there's some outward as well as inward swing that's hindered by the armor around the ankle. He's also got ankle tilt downwards as well as upwards. He looks a little bit hindered but you can slide that foot over that armor piece and squeeze a little bit more range. And finally, he has ankle pivot outwards as well as inwards. Coming back to my point on stability, and this is most apparent when you get him in a vanilla stance, the ball joints in the hips just seem to want to keep fighting you. And it's strange how the ball joint just wants to fight you and ends up tilting itself backwards. Ending up in a strange backward incline and coupled with the small feet, it just doesn't want to stand stable. So the trick is to kind of fix him in a position, use his thigh swivels to kind of swing his feet outwards a little bit and also make sure that you have the ankles tilted upwards slightly so there's a sort of incline to that leg. And so now hopefully you should be able to get him into a neutral vanilla stance standing stable enough. But despite that gummy hip issue as well as his small feet, you should be able to use his many points of articulation to get him into many different farm poses. And you can also couple those swappable fists with some blast effects from previous Iron Man figures to get him into different fighting poses. And of course the team up with Captain Carter starts to look even better once you put both of them together in action. They also look fantastic flying into the battlefield together. And finally, sharing a tender moment together. As you know by now, the Hydra Stomper is a big heavy hitter and stands at just under 9.5 inches or about 24 centimeters. Naturally, he towers over Captain Carter and is also taller than the Watcher build a figure. He also towers over the Iron Monger build a figure and the modular armor Iron Man. Here he is with Black Widow and Spider Man. He's just a little shorter than the Marvel Select Titanium Man. Here he is with some G.I. Joe classified series and some Star Wars Black series. The Hydra Stomper is a big, bulky, and heavy action figure with more than a decent amount of articulation. There's not much paint on the figure and there are stability issues especially in a neutral stance with the gummy hip ball joints and small feet. Still, I'm particularly impressed with the sculpt because there's a whole lot of detail on it and this level of detail is usually lacking on animation style figures. What ultimately helps me recommend this figure to you is its sheer size and shelf presence. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe to my channel for more toy reviews. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.